blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation. Hello, everybody, and welcome again to Hymns, Psalms, and Spiritual Songs with Cliff and Maria. We are here today again with you all. Have such great times with you every Sunday. And uh, we're introducing an old hymn. How about that? An yes. old hymn, not a new hymn. This is Blessed Assurance, and the author is Fanny Crosby. Uh, Fanny Crosby was born March 24th, 1820, and she lived until February 12th. 1915. And so we're going to be um, talking about Fanny Crosby particularly a uh, few times because she wrote how many hymns? Over 9,000. Over 9,000. That's just a little <laughs> bit like a lot, okay, of hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs. So um, this is going to be um, like a preview of her history. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll do is add songs on as they come and make a break there so you know exactly what we're doing, okay? But for Blessed Assurance, um, there are some scripture references. Yes. And uh, would you please review the ones that we, uh, we yes. think are appropriate? Romans 8, 1, mm -hmm. verses, also verses 16 and 17. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, mm -hmm. heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, mm -hmm. provided we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. Amen. And 1 John, also 5, uh, 13. Yes, uh, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. Mm, that's wonderful. We have eternal life, that yes. blessed assurance. Well, some of the themes are, um, of course, assurance and submission to his will, praise and salvation. Born in Putnam County, New York, a native USA person. Fanny Crosby became ill within two months of being born. Unfortunately, the family doctor was away, and another man pretended to be a certified physician, treated her by prescribing hot mustard patches, or what are those things? Poultices. Yeah. Poultices. Okay, i got to look that word up. Poultices <laughs> to be applied to her eyes. Her illness eventually relented, went back, but the treatments left her blind. Mm. When the doctor was revealed to be a quack, he disappeared. Hmm. A few months later, Crosby's father died as well, and her mother was forced to find work as a maid to support the family. Fanny was mostly raised by her Christian grandmother and grew up an active, happy child. Her love for poetry began early. Her first verses, written at age eight, echoed her lifelong refusal to feel sorry for herself. I mean, mm. What was that poem? Oh, what a happy soul I am, mm -hmm. although I cannot see. I am resolved that in this world contented I will be. Mm. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. That's right. I wow. can out and I'm not going to do it. Mm. While she enjoyed her poetry, she zealously memorize the Bible, memorizing five chapters a week, wow. even as a child. Okay, five chapters a week. Okay, wow. I'm not going to even try to fathom that. Okay, she continued to recite the Pentateuch, the five mm. Gospels, Proverbs, and Songs of Solomon, as many Psalms, as chapters, and verses as she could. Mm. And her mother's hard work paid off. Yes. Shortly before her 15th birthday, Crosby was sent to the recently founded New York Institute for the Blind, mm. which would be her home for 23 years, 12 as a student and 11 as a teacher. She initially indulged in her own poetry and was called upon to pen verses for various occasions. In time, the principal asked her to avoid such distractions mm. in favor of her general instruction. 
We have no right to be vain in the presence of the owner and creator of all things, he said. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's painful. Yeah? That's painful. Why, why do you say that? Because, I mean, this is a gifted student, and then there's this instructor, you uh -huh. would think, who would be open to the many giftings because when you're, there's a blindness or a handicap, then there's a, God gives an, another strength somewhere. Right, right. But this this teacher kind yes. of just like put her down. Yes. And just said, oh, we don't need to do that. Because it would be vain. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. Well, anyway, go ahead, go ahead. And it was the work of a traveling Scottish phrenologist. Not her teacher. Not her teacher. That's <laughs> one who studies the shape and the irregularities of the skull for mm -hmm. insights into character and mental capacity. Mm -hmm. hmm. That changed the school's mind and again ignited her passion to versify. Mm -hmm. After he examined her, he proclaimed her a poet. Yes. His words were to prove prophetic. He said, here is a poetess. Give her every possible encouragement. Mm -hmm. Read the best books to her and teach her the finest that is in poetry. You will hear from this young lady someday. And we did, didn't yes. we? Wow. It didn't take long. By age 23, Crosby was addressing Congress mm. and making friends with presidents. In fact, she knew all of the chief executives of her lifetime, especially Grover Cleveland, who served as secretary for an Institute of the Blind before his election to presidency. She contributed a poetic eulogy on President William Henry Harrison. I think he was only in the White House for a little while, one of our, um, one of our presidents who died early. Mm. Yeah. Um, to the New York Herald, that's where she submitted it, in 1841. Then subsequently published verses in other newspapers. Wow. In 1851, she began writing verses to be set to music with George F. Root, musical director, at the school, Crosby wrote successful cantatas. Uh, the cantata that she's most um, famous for is called The Flower Queen. Again, The Flower Queen. She also wrote lyrics for scores and songs, some of which were widely popular. After her graduation, Crosby remained at New York Institution for the Blind as a teacher of English grammar and rhetoric and of ancient history until 1858. In 1858, a former institute pupil, Alexander Van Alstein, married mm. Crosby. Considered one of New York's best organists, he wrote the music to many of Crosby's hymns. Yes. Crosby herself put music to only a few of hers, though she played harp, piano, guitar and other instruments. She played kazoo, <laughs> and she played, uh, she played the little, that banjo thing, go, mm -de -mm -de -mm -de. she played the she finger harp. She did spoons. She did spoons, too. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, <laughs> you guys were making a funny. We were not trying to bag on Fanny Crosby. We love Fanny Crosby, yes. so it's, anyway, let's go on. And more often, uh -huh. musicians came to her for lyrics. Yes. Though she was under contract to submit three hymns a week to her publisher, and often wrote six or seven a day. Wow! For a dollar or two each. Yep. They were they were making money. Yep. Back her, then. Back yes. then, a dollar each, six or seven a day. Well, okay, I, I don't know. Mm -mm. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> many of them became incredibly popular. Crosby wrote more than nine thousand hymns. Yeah. And used more than two hundred pen names. Yeah, she so so what she would do is she wanted to, um, she, being a, a writer at that time and being a lady or being a woman mm. wasn't necessarily all that popular. Yeah. So she would change her name, and she would write under a different pen name. That's awesome. uh, you, sometimes it would even be a male name, so they wouldn't That's know. Right. So she can get the funds and the proceeds for that publishing. So uh, you Very know, she was like, "I'm no longer going to write for you know mm. uh, a dollar a." A dollar, a dollar a, a hymn song. or a song. No, I'm going to get paid, and we need to get paid. So um, that's, uh, I appreciate her for that. Yes. Her her and um, Bach. Bach wouldn't work for free. Yes. Yes, he was a church musician, but he got paid well. The guy would write a cantata a Sunday. Her blindness didn't diminish her productivity. Mm -hmm. She would formulate an entire song in her mind and then dictate wow. it to a friend or a secretary. 
Wow. So she would have it all ready. It's all. It's all there. The score is live. Wow. Cool. It cool. It's noisy in there. Yeah, but I'm sorry. You said <laughs> you sorry. said it must have been noisy in yeah, there. Noisy. That's right. Have to get it out. Just got to get it out. Just you know, if it's noisy up here, you got to get it out. Three o'clock in the morning. Oh, here's yeah. another M. Okay, God, here we go. Now I can go to sleep. Now I can go to sleep. Oh, there's another one. <laughs> Almost like Prince. Mm -hmm. Prince as in Purple Rain. Yes, Prince. We made a reference to Prince. It'll be in the notes. Yes. <laughs> Tags at least. So now we're going to get into the specifics of this song, Blessed Assurance. One of her good friends was Phoebe Palmer Knapp, wife of the founder of the Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. One time when Knapp came to Brooklyn to see Crosby, she brought a tune with her that she had composed. Play it for me on the organ, Crosby requested. Knapp did, and then asked, what does this tune say? She turned to see Crosby kneeling in prayer. Knapp played it a second time and then a third. Finally, the blind woman responded, That say, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Though she could write a very complex hymn and compose music with more classical structure, or and she did also improvise, she preferred to write simple, sentimental verses that could be used for evangelism. Mm -hmm. She wanted to reach out to Jesus, reach out to people with, the, with Jesus. Mm -hmm. She continued to write her poetry up until her death and a month shy of her 95th birthday. Wow. And this is her actual, this is a saying from her? Uh, yes, uh, the, the last stanza that she wrote. Okay. Was you will reach the river brink some sweet day by and by was her last stanza. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And engraved on Fanny Jane Crosby's tombstone at Bridgeport, Connecticut, are these significant words taken from our Lord's remarks to Mary, the sister of Lazarus, after she had anointed him, Jesus, with costly perfume. Mm -hmm. And on the tombstone it says, she hath done what she could. Mm -hmm. And that's taken from Mark. 14. Okay. I think it's a great pity that the master did not give you sight when he showered so many other gifts upon you, remarked some well-meaning preacher to mm -hmm. Fanny Crosby. Fanny responded at once. Do you know that if at birth I had been able to make one petition, it would have been that I was born blind? Because when I get to heaven, the first face that shall ever gladden my sight will be that of my Savior. Amen. Wow. And then you wrote this other little thing. What is this uh, right here? You may trust the Lord too little, but you can never trust Him too much. Hmm. Why did you put that? If that's Fanny's life. I mean, she couldn't see. Hmm. And usually a lot of us, many of us rely on our, our sight to hmm. get us to where we're going. Yeah. But she had to literally trust God to, to give her the next step, to give her the next encouragement for the next day, to give her what she needed to keep moving forward. And despite the principal's comments, and, and maybe I'm sure there were others that had said things to her, such as, you're healed. You believe in Jesus, you're healed. So open your eyes. But she went forward and hmm. did what she had to do because she knew she was called of God, and she trusted Him to guide her, provide for her, and meet her need. Amen. So. Beautiful. The life of Fanny Crosby. Okay, Maria, so now we have this song here, Blessed Assurance by Fanny Crosby. Is there any uh, special thing that we did um, to, uh, to kind of tweak the song? As our yes. Uh, we added a little bit of a Latin intro. Okay. Um, Oh, what a foretaste 
again for joining us for hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs with Cliff and Maria. We're so delighted to have you guys from week to week. Please subscribe to our channel and also make comments. So we look forward to hearing what you uh, have to say or suggesting another hymn for us to uh, take apart, dissect, or provide the history for. I like to think of this as a resource for worship leaders, but yes. also just as a form of uh, just praising God as we do it. Um, remember that worship is what you do from day to day uh, mm. under your creator. So it's not just playing music or just doing a specific spiritual activity, but it's also our day to day before the Lord because he is sovereign and all that we do is worship uh, mm. unto the Lord. So remember that. Um, well, I didn't know I was going to say that. That's there good. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so subscribe to our channel. Also, we have Beauty is to Worship online uh, for you to uh, purchase uh, at iTunes. And uh, we'll see you next time. We'll yes. see you next Sunday on hymns, psalms, and spiritual songs. Goodbye. Goodbye. Beauty is to worship. Beauty is to see your face. And there's no one else around, my God. I just want to see.